Since their introduction 30 years ago, smoke detectors have been credited with reducing the number of annual fire fatalities by 50 percent. That's a pretty staggering number. You might wonder how they go about doing that. Well, smoke detectors watch out for you while you're sleeping, when you're really at the most vulnerable. Most fire fatalities occur as a direct result of smoke inhalation rather than the fire itself. Anything that can give you early warning of smoke is going to double your chances of survival. Well, you've probably heard this message about smoke detectors and batteries so often it's actually just faded into the background. What we'd like to do today is go to a real house and talk to a real person about real problems with smoke detectors. Come on this way. Hi, Brian. Oh, hi. I understand you're having a problem with smoke detectors today. Yeah, I am. It seems to be going off every time I make toast. Is there anything I can do to avoid that? Okay, well, let's go have a look at it. Okay. Here's the toaster. Okay. And so every time you put toast in, then smoke goes up to the ceiling and the alarm goes off. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Um, that's what we call a nuisance alarm. And after a while, that's going to get to be so annoying that you either feel like popping the battery out of them, the smoke detector, mm -hmm. or just removing it completely. And that's the last thing in the world that we want to have happen. Uh, you may not be aware of it, but you are not actually required to have a smoke detector in your kitchen, precisely for that reason. So what we recommend is that you actually have a smoke detector nearby, but not actually in the cooking area itself. Okay. Now, of course, the next thing that comes to mind is, well, what happens if I have a fire in exactly. the kitchen itself? Mm -hmm. Well, what we figure on that one is that if you have a cooking fire, chances are you're right there doing the cooking. So you're going to be aware of it more before anybody else will. Or if you have a pot on the stove or something like that, you're already out of the house anyway. So we're not quite so concerned about those. As long as you have a smoke detector nearby and it's functioning, that meets all the requirements. Now, how many smoke detectors does one need and where should they be best located? Okay. The codes are actually pretty clear cut on that one. You have to have one smoke detector in each sleeping quarters, so everybody's bedroom has to have one, and one out in the hallway outside, and beyond that, one smoke detector per level. Um, how often does one need to change the, the smoke detector batteries? Okay. What we're recommending for standard battery-operated smoke detectors, and also ones that operate off a of household current, is that the batteries be changed once a year. And Pick a date that works for you. Some people use an anniversary, some people use birthdays, but one way or the other, make sure you change out that battery once a year. Do smoke detectors ever wear out? All smoke detectors, regardless of whether it's a household current or battery type, have a shelf life of 10 years, and they have to be replaced. How do you dispose of them? They can go into the regular garbage. It's all right. Now, I've heard stories of children actually sleeping through fire detector alarms. Is that true? It's one of the scariest things we've learned about in recent years. Um, let's go upstairs and let's see where the uh, sleeping quarters are. We'll talk about it up there. Okay. Okay, that smoke detector is, is exactly where you want it to be, right here in the sleeping quarters. I also noticed on the way in you have one outside in the hallway. Mm -hmm. So perfect, you are covered. The only problem with a kid's bedroom is that the Consumer Product Safety Commission has said children under the age of 16 will not reliably be woken up by a smoke detector. The reason for that is that kids have got a fairly long and a fairly deep sleep cycle. So while an adult is going to be woken up by the blast of one of those things, we can't guarantee that's going to happen with a child. So as a parent, it's your responsibility when the smoke detector goes off, go right to your kid's room, wake them up, make sure that they get out at the same time as you do. That's great information, Brian. Is there anything else you can suggest for me? Everything looks wonderful here. It, it, it looks perfect. I wish everyone did it as well as you guys do. There are two new products that I should mention. First, smoke detectors are now available with a 10-year lithium battery. Instead of replacing the battery every year, you replace the entire unit after 10 years. Second, there are some smoke detectors now available with a built-in voice recorder. This allows parents to give special instructions to their children in the event of a fire. So in summary, make sure you have the right number of smoke detectors in your house, Make sure that they're placed properly. Make sure they actually work. Change out the batteries at regular intervals. Push the test button. Make sure that they actually function. Our fire marshal has said the best chance you have of ensuring your own survival is early recognition and a quick exit. The other thing that does is help us to get in and have a better chance of putting out the fire. 
The sooner we know about it, the better off we are as well. Help us to help you. Make sure you have a working smoke detector.